Hey, look, Clee, you're blurry in the background. Yeah, I have the. the <laughs> I have not, 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 not. Monday motivational madness. A crazy good way to start your week. Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the media studio. This is our media studio. It's still a work in progress, but as you can see, we have our awesome wall of guitars back there. And this video is a Monday Motivational Madness video brought to you by our awesome patrons. Yes! Thank you patrons for being so supportive and thank you to all of you for watching our videos. Obviously not everybody watches our videos. In fact, there have been quite a few people out there that have rejected our videos, whether or not it was based on my face or based on the fact that Klee has no eyebrows. It's like my eyebrows have rejected the limelight. The fact of the matter is that if you're going to be an artist, do anything creative or put yourself out there in any way, shape or form, you are going to have to face rejection. So are you ready to talk about rejection? <laughs> you're talking to a lifelong reject right here, starting with grade school sports up to present day. The thing is that when you do put yourself out there and you put yourself out there often, and you do face rejection, things get a little bit easier and easier and you get a different perspective on how to deal with rejection. I was usually the kid that caught the basketball with my face. <laughs> I know that a lot of you guys are starting out or you've been doing this for a very short amount of time. Um, the idea of putting yourself out there and, and having to face rejection could be scary. So I wanna share a perspective that I have when it comes to rejection, that really is the thing that kind of helped me with facing rejection and by facing rejection, putting myself more and more out there, doing more things that were out in the public, having many more opportunities to get rejected and thus being rejected quite often. The thing to remember is that no matter what, because a lot of us are kind of like waiting around, right? So like maybe you get rejected because you entered your piece into a gallery or you're waiting on a phone call or, or something like that. Like you're waiting to see if you're gonna get in or you're gonna get rejected because that's basically how it works. You're either getting accepted or you're getting rejected. And unfortunately what ends up happening is that a lot of times you're like waiting around on pins and needles to see if you've been approved. I have been approved, I have not been rejected. One important fact to remember is that yes, although they might be qualifying you, they might be qualifying your work, which Honestly, there's a bunch of reasons why your work might get rejected or something that you propose might get rejected that have nothing really to do with the work. There's all kinds of reasons for that. For many years, I was like low-key unspoken rejected from one of the galleries in town where we lived. Mm -hmm. And it went on and on. It was like, it was kind of agonizing because it was an unspoken rejection. It just got dragged out like they lost my application and then they didn't have any openings for me to jury in. And then, you know, it just went on and on. Yeah, and then I became a member of the gallery. Yeah. And then I rejected the gallery so it kind of worked. Yeah. It came in full circle because you didn't want to be there at the beginning. No, with. I discovered it really wasn't the place for me to no. begin with. So when you get rejected like that, you could either spend your time feeling bad that you got rejected or understand that there's a big chance that you didn't want to be part of that particular gallery or group or whatever it was in the first place. That being said, not every gallery is like that. Not every art business is like that. Honestly, it is the minority of businesses that are like that. The only problem is that when you're dealing with the art world, there, there are these arbitrary rules that have been made up to kind of suggest what is good art, what is bad art, what is this art, what is that art. But the thing you have to remember is that in them, either approving or rejecting you, you are also qualifying them and thus approving or rejecting them. If you get rejected, then chances are you didn't wanna be there to begin with. Mm -hmm. One great thing that I like to remind myself is that I don't wanna be a member of any kind of group, organization, club, or anything like that that does not approve of me, that rejects me. So it's kind of like I reject whoever rejects my stuff. and. That's pretty much how I approach it. That being said, I would say that understanding that rejection is just part of the growth process is important. And, you know, we've been rejected many, many, many times. One of the worst times for me was when I got rejected from the group show at the big gallery in town. And you guys, 
I had literally fallen on my face the day before entering my artwork into this juried show. Like I fell on my face, I chipped my tooth, I had like a big um, wound going on here, so my face looked really messed up. I like mustered the courage to go in anyway and submit my piece looking like, like, don't ask me about what happened. <laughs> and then the piece got rejected. Yeah, the, which I think you are bad ass for doing that. I was proud of myself yeah. for showing up with the art. So this is another example of a group show, right? Usually there's a group show and there's hundreds of people that submit their pieces. And honestly, a lot of times the reason that artwork won't make it into the show is because there just isn't enough room. I know myself, whenever I've judged any uh, big group shows, I've always had a very hard time choosing pieces that weren't gonna be in the show because I just love the artwork and honestly anything that anybody creates that they pour something into that works within the theme of the show is going to make it into the show. There's a lot of unpredictable factors like who's judging the show, what kind of artwork do they like, what kind of artwork do they not like, um, why is the show being put together, things like that. Like there are all kinds of things that have nothing to do with the actual art that might cause your work to get rejected. It's kind of been designed to uh, put it as a competition where artists are basically vying for a position in order to be recognized as artists. And that nothing could be further from the truth. You don't need anybody else to recognize you as an artist. You just need to know you yourself in your heart that what you create is art and thus you are an artist. Over a decade ago, when we first approached some of the galleries, um, immediately we were rejected. Like, I remember walking in and being like, hi, um, what does it take to put your artwork in here? And people just kind of like, because nobody knew who we were or anything like that. We didn't have any reputation or anything. And it was my first time, like, actually, like, going into a gallery and being brave. Like, cold approach. Cold approach. And the people were so like, well, we're not accepting applications at the moment. So there was a year and a half wait and all that stuff. And I remember being like super disappointed and being like, did I just get rejected? <laughs> Back when I first started, not too many people knew who I was. And so like, because I didn't have that street cred yet, because I hadn't put myself out there, um, a lot of people didn't know who I was. So like, they'd see my art come in and there's this perception that uh, for some reason is in the art world where like uh, the galleries, it's almost like they're doing us a favor by us showing up and applying to a gallery or applying for a show or something like that. And the thing to remember there is that no matter what, the galleries need you. Uh, the gallery, nothing much would be happening if a gallery didn't have artists to show art and the shows as well. I mean, a, an art festival wouldn't be very exciting if there weren't any artists there. On the flip side to that, you don't really need a gallery and you don't really need an art festival to be able to show your art. As long as you're thinking outside of the box and you're innovative and you're putting yourself out there in your own way, then you don't need them. So those tables, when it comes to that rejection, just remember you are qualifying them as much as they might be qualifying you for their show. I remember I submitted a proposal, like I put a lot of work into this proposal and I submitted this beautiful uh, piece of a girl who was for like um, child abuse awareness and stuff like that. And, but it was being put together by some of the really clicky artists that were in town. Like these were like the, the famous artists that um, you know, came from a certain background and whatnot. And I remember submitting this and then getting zero, like basically I got ghosted. I got zero response. And I knew that there had been a little bit of, because I was the new guy and they couldn't understand, like, where did this guy come from? And wh why is he, why are people buying his art? There was always this weird vibe that would happen when I would meet them. So the fact that like, I got completely ignored, I mean, ignored. Like there was zero response, zero anything. And I remember thinking to myself, well, fine, I'm gonna just do it myself. A lot of artists believe in that myth that's out there that we're all in a competition, that this art is better, my art is better than yours, your art is better than mine, this whole thing. And because of that, what ends up happening is you get these little clicks of philosophical mentality about what art is and what art isn't. And sometimes you don't fit into that click. And I know that in the town that I was in, not everyone, everyone was very open and inviting, but there was a particular 
group that they were very, very clicky. So my way of dealing with it was understanding, well, I don't really need you. Like, I'm gonna do this myself. You rejected their rejection with action. I did, I did. You wanna reject me? That's fine. You wanna get all clicky? That's fine. I'll make my own click. I don't need you. I decided that I wasn't gonna focus on them and what possibilities weren't coming my way because of the clickiness of it. I decided that, fine, I'm gonna blaze my own trail and uh, be a huge thorn in your side because I'm gonna be so awesome that you're not gonna be able to ignore me. Then you have situations where people just fall off. Like, who knows? You have no idea what's going on in the background. So one of the biggest hits to my ego was the time that uh, the gallery approached me uh, it was a gallery about two hours away from where we lived. Fancy, Ooh, fancy gallery. Fancy, big, big deal of a gallery, yeah. They reached out to me and they said, we've already looked at your collection. We want your jewelry in our uh, new gallery that we're opening up and you're in. All we need from you is pictures and some basic pricing of your work, which I promptly sent. And then they ghosted me. Yep. And then I sent an email a week later and then two weeks later and then a month later and then I never heard from them again. The ghost, <laughs> the ghosting of the artist. And I was like, what did I do? <laughs> he didn't do anything. <laughs> a lot of times it's easy to take it personal when somebody doesn't reach out or maybe they fall off the radar and you feel like you've been rejected. My advice when it comes to that kind of stuff is just don't take it personal. Don't take rejection as this sign that like there's something wrong with you or something wrong with your art. Just take a look at it as growing pains, as you are putting yourself out there. And it is a big, huge part of putting yourself out there. It's, it's a badge, it's a badge of honor that you get to wear whenever you go out and you do a show. We had one Sour Patch Kid left, and then you wanted it, but then I ate it. Rejected, ooh. That's not rejection rejected. as much as just straight up unfairness. I am very proud to say that I have been rejected hundreds upon hundreds of times. Uh, to me, that's awesome because it means that I put myself out there, I didn't make it, and then I just kept going and kept going and kept going. And that's the way that I see rejection. I don't see it as a tarnishing thing. I don't see it as a bad sign of anything. It's just a sign to me that you're putting yourself out there. So go out there and embrace the rejection and keep putting yourself out there and keep putting yourself out there because I can tell you right now, you're gonna be way more excited about being rejected hundreds of times and succeeding than being rejected once and not even trying. So as far as Monday Motivational Madness goes, go out there and get rejected. I know that doesn't sound very motivational, but understand, rejection is a badge, so wear it, wear it proudly. And I hope you guys enjoyed the Monday Motivational Madness brought to you by our amazing patrons. I'm curious to know how you've handled any rejection and how many times, possibly, if you can remember, <laughs> that you've been rejected. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. All right, so video is ending soon. You're supposed to do something. <laughs> you're supposed to say goodbye. I love you all. Good day. <laughs> you, why do you say it like that? Like you're running a race. <laughs> Are you ready to say goodbye, Kali? Good day, everyone. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. If you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. I'll talk to you later. Adios.